Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we're back for the second half of our look at Russian vids. In this episode, we're going to have a look at his use of Stellarium, a free planetarium program available on the internet. Link in the description. To try and claim that the southern star trails somehow don't fit the globe model. So let's cue up the music and see some more of this silliness. Okay, let's get to the star trails and have a look at some star trails from Australia and see whether or not we can figure out what's going on. Now let's take a look at this footage of time-lapse star trails from Coonabara brand, Australia. You'll see these star trails move in a completely different direction from the southern hemisphere. Okay, so that says looking west. So let's go ahead and see what the stars would look like looking west from Sydney, Australia, which is close by. We're going to use a program called Stellarium and be able to simulate that. And I believe that was listed as being April of 2016, so we'll use the same time. Okay, so here we are in Stellarium. As you can see, this is April 2016. It's about three, that's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. And we're looking north from Sydney, Australia. Let's go ahead and look over here a little bit more towards the west. And this is the afternoon. There's the setting sun. Let's go ahead and take the sky out and see if we can get a little better view here so we can see what's going on. So there are the stars. And the one last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the grid system in the sky so we can see how movements go. So there we are. So let's go ahead and play this. So looking to the west, or to the northwest, we're seeing this counterclockwise rotation. You can see it really well if we look north. You see how the stars are rotating counterclockwise? Now, let's look at something interesting. Let's bring this right around and look towards the south. Look at all those satellites going by. Looky there, clockwise rotation looking south. So, there's the southern celestial pole. Objects rotate clockwise around it, whereas if we look north towards the north celestial pole, which you, of course, can't see from Australia because it's in the southern hemisphere of the Earth, this is the way that we would expect the sky to move on a globe because the sky itself is not moving. The Earth is rotating underneath it. And as a result, since the Earth is rotating from the west to the east, we would expect this counterclockwise rotation if we look north. And clockwise rotation if we look south. Guess what? That's exactly what I see up here in the northern hemisphere in Michigan as well. We'll go ahead and have a look at what I see up in Michigan. Now let's go ahead and change this to Detroit, Michigan. So there we are. Let's go ahead and look north. Counterclockwise rotation. Let's bring it around and look south. Clockwise rotation. And I can't see the southern celestial pole but I can see the northern celestial pole. Makes perfect sense on the globe Earth. Absolutely perfect sense. And if you pull out a globe, rotate it from west to east, and look to the north and look to the south on that globe, you'll see exactly how the motion of the Earth is reflected in the way the stars move. You know, here's a word to the wise Russian vid. If you're going to use a program like Stellarium, to try and make your silly flat earth point, at least understand what the program Stellarium is showing you. Because if not, somebody like me is going to come out and hand you your tail again. So once again, let's look at these star trails and see how he's confused and correct him a little bit. Perhaps star trails from Coonabara brand, Australia. You'll see these star trails move in a completely different direction from the southern hemisphere. 
It's all about angle. It's all about perspective, where you're standing, where you're looking. This is looking at the west. Well, this is cut up quite a bit because it said looking east. Now it's looking west. So I don't really know which way he's looking. Let's see if we can tell it from the stars. Going clockwise. Yeah. And this is looking towards the east again. Okay, so it's moving clockwise as we're looking a little bit towards the southwest. You can tell that by the rotation of the stars. Let's go see what else we have. To the setting sky. You see the star trails going clockwise. Now this is looking towards the east. Again, same. Now actually that's kind of looking towards the southeast because the southern celestial pole will be on the right side of the screen, just off of it and the star trails are moving in a clockwise manner. You'll see these reversed when we look north. It's going clockwise. This is looking north at the seasonal constellations. Now you see the star trail going counterclockwise from Australia. Yes, and that's exactly what you would expect. So let's just double check something here. Notice that these star trails are moving in this direction in a counterclockwise manner. At what point are they rotating about? A point that's well below the screen here. That's the northern celestial pole. And since this is the southern hemisphere, that northern celestial pole will not be visible. It will not be high in the sky. It's high in the sky up here in Michigan in the northern hemisphere, but I can't see the southern celestial pole. What does that tell you, Russian vid? Anything? Can you connect the dots between that? Why can I only see the northern celestial pole in Michigan, and they can only see the southern celestial pole in Australia? It's because the Earth is a rotating sphere. As we all seen, obviously, star so. trails in the so-called southern hemisphere once again travel both clockwise and counterclockwise. So it has absolutely nothing to do with supposedly living on a bogus globe. And that's exactly what you would expect on a globe, depending on whether you're looking south or you're looking north. I see the same thing here in Michigan. If I look south, the stars rotate clockwise. If I look north, the stars rotate counterclockwise. That's because I'm sitting on the earth, which is rotating from west to east underneath the stars. It's exactly what we would expect. And I demonstrated this using Stellarium, which is the program that you used, Russian Vid. You could have understood this had you actually learned from your source. But you thought you'd use it somehow to bolster up your silly little flat earth narrative. You tried to put it out and cherry pick something from it without understanding what it was actually showing you. That's on you, Chief. Again, with the outer rim or outer circle, as you can see here with this with this flat earth model, this flat earth map. Basically, again, this is just a general representation. But the point being is when it comes to the inner circle within the so-called equator, we can all see Polaris, a North Star, stationary above the North Pole from every aspect of the inner circle. Now, here's the major issue, and it is the Southern Cross. It cannot be viewed simultaneously from the outer circle. Can't happen, doesn't happen. Now that's kind of a strange thing to say because you can see the Southern Cross from the tip of South America, the tip of Africa, and the tip of Australia, especially around June when it's dark for an extended period of the day in those locations. You can find an instant in time where it is dark in all three of those locations. And in all three of those locations, you will see the Southern Cross, but they will be in different directions on your flat earth model. How can one object be in three different directions, 120 degrees apart? It can't. The only way that works is instead of the continents pointing in different directions, they wrap around the Southern hemisphere of a sphere and all point towards the same stars, which is exactly what happens. Now to completely debunk the, the notion of again, us living on a ball earth with the so-called Southern Hemisphere where people are standing upside down and many people use that, believe in the ball earth. Again, it's star trail. So this is what it's all about. Let's take a look here. And this is from Perth, Australia. Again, let's take a look. 
And I'm going to play this. I'm going to speed up the, the footage just a bit so people have a good idea of what they're looking at. And this is facing north. And again, here's the moon, the sun, and they're moving towards less left, of course. Let's speed this up just a tad so we can get this going. I'm going to slow it down now. Now, again, you see pointing towards north, going, looking towards the north, you see the counterclockwise star trail. Now, notice that those star trails are moving in a counterclockwise method, about a point that is below the horizon. Let me go ahead and pull up Stellarium from Perth, Australia, and we'll see if we can demonstrate this. Now, I think this is June of 2019. We'll try and hit about the same time. Give me just a second. Okay, so here we have Stellarium again. Notice it's Perth, Australia, and it's June of 2019, and we're looking north. So this is essentially the same thing that we're looking at with Russian vids. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit clearer for you. So let's go ahead and turn the sky off. Now the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to put something called the equatorial grid in. So here we go. When I put the stars in motion, notice that they're going to move in a counterclockwise fashion because we're facing north. And see where they're rotating. Look at that. Counterclockwise rotation about a point that is below the horizon. Now let's bring it around to the south and see the same thing. Well, looky there clockwise rotation about a point that is above the horizon. Look at all those satellites going by. You know, the beautiful thing about Stellarium is that it's a free program available for download from the internet. I'll have a video on how to use it uh, in a little more detail on my other channel, Common Sense Science, probably in the next month or so. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and visiting with me today. Remember, hit that like and subscribe, and we do have Patreon and memberships for this channel that'll go towards the new telescope fund. So, thanks again for stopping by, and we'll see you again soon.